If we think back to the fundamentals course where we were using JSON web tokens as our way to tell whether or not users should get access to certain resources, we were implementing some things that were very specific to JSON web tokens. For example, we had this attach user middleware and this middleware got the token from the authorization header and then it decoded it and took that decoded tokens payload and put it onto the request object. And this was a representation of the user. It had the user's information, like their ID and their name, email, etc. Now, because we're using sessions in this case, we no longer need to attach a user in this way. Instead, the user is going to be on the session that exists on the server whenever they log in or sign up. And that means that there's no kind of work that we have to do every time a request comes into the server. Instead, the user information is just going to exist. So for our purposes here, we can just actually delete all of this. We don't need this middleware at all anymore. We will, however, still need these middlewares, require auth and require admin, and we're going to continue using them at our various endpoints to protect them. However, we need to make some changes. For example, the require auth middleware is using express JWT. And again, this is very specific to JSON web tokens. Instead, now what we need to do is consult the user's session on our backend to tell whether or not they are authenticated. So let's get rid of this bit here. And instead, let's implement our own custom middleware. So custom middlewares have a request, response, and next function. And for our purposes here, this check is going to be fairly simple. We're going to look for a user coming in on the request.session. And if there is no user, we're just going to return an error. So we'll say return a response with a status of 401. And that's going to be a JSON response with a message that says unauthorized. However, if the user does exist on the session, then we will just go on to the next function. Require admin can stay pretty much as it is, but we are going to instead now take the user from request.session. And here, this check is going to be if user.role does not equal admin. So let's save this now. And we're going to go over to our dashboard here and refresh. And the first thing we'll see is that we've got an error and we're getting a 401. Once again, that's because every time we refresh our server here, it's going to wipe out our sessions. We're going to fix that in a little bit. For now, let's log in once more. So we'll log out and then back in. So now we are able to get to that dashboard data. We've got a good result coming in there. One spot that we need to fix up still is going to be anywhere on our backend that we are using the user's ID in a request. For example, this inventory area. We're currently getting an error coming back from the server, and that's because if we take a look at the endpoint, which gives us inventory data, we're looking for this sub property. That sub claim that was coming from the JSON web token is no longer going to be there, so we need to change things up here. So in this case, we will say const destructured user equals request.session. And when we go to find inventory items, we are going to look for them where user is equal to user dot underscore ID. Now we'll need to make this change in our other endpoints as well. So coming down to where we post inventory items, let's overwrite this line and user dot ID will go in here as well. And now where we delete inventory items, it'll be something similar user where the user is equal to user dot underscore ID. Let's take a look at the other endpoints we've got. We have one here where we get users and that's just looking for all of them. So we can leave that as is. Down here where we are getting bios, we can change this up. So we'll have destructured user comes from the request session. And let's change this up a little bit because these names here are going to collide. Maybe we can just call this found user and we'll change this up to say user.id. And then when we respond with data, we will respond with found user dot bio over here where we update a bio. We need to do the same thing. ID is going to be user dot ID. And it looks like that is about it. So let's save this and we'll come back over and refresh again. We'll need to log in once more. So now when we go over to inventory, we get our items and we can do things like delete them as well.